Let your soul shine. It's better than sunshine. It's better than moonshine. And it's damn sure better than rain. <laughs> That's all you that's need what, to do, that's man. That's I was getting pumped up. Don't worry. I, I'm a better builder than I am. No, 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 no. You did great, Zeke. You totally did great, man. That great. was good. Can, Nobody's done the album. No, no. Now. It's all good, man. <laughs> I know. It's weird. It's construction. Weird. But you know what, though? I think there's been, every single day I've been on site, someone's singing a tune. Absolutely. I'm in a tune. Absolutely. Drumming a tune. Like, oh, yeah. they're everybody's doing music. But I guess when the mic's on or the camera's on, yeah. nobody wants to get caught doing That's it. That's right, yeah. <laughs> when all eyes are on you, for sure. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. And, and I found out about you because obviously Thermary. Yeah. That's when I first heard about you. And I was actually impressed with the project that you did there. And it's, uh, it's almost like unicorns to find people that have worked with that product. I know more and more people are working with that product. Yeah. Um, but I, I like seeing what other people do with it. Yeah. I, I've done what I can do with it and I want to do more with it. Um, it's a premium product. I understand that. But yeah. it's a great product to work with, right? Fantastic. Yeah, the thermally modified ash that we used. Uh, we've actually used a few, few thermoroy products. Uh, you've used, done the Scott Pine. You've done the ash. Exactly. What yeah. else have you done? Uh, we've just done a few product, a pr few projects with the ash. Okay, yeah. I think it's just those two products. We've the ash is so just far. I saw, I saw the red oak they came out with. That's that's real sweet. But they've got some interesting. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah, it's that's just like I even I'm on the fence. Are you are you more of a weather dash or are you more of an oil dash? Uh, I'd say more oil. Oil would be my preference. keeping the natural yeah. tone. Yeah, as far as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and then Some, the way it weathers too is yeah is the beautiful. silvery. There's something about the yeah. silver that I like. It just it adds to a structure, right? Like we had it treated by uh, by his name John Wick. John John Wick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so deck he, Protect. At deck Protect. Yeah, yeah, great guy. Yeah, man, that guy. Knows he knows his oils. Wood. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so all of our projects, he he coats it both sides through his process, and then he sends it out to us so that at least when it fades in the sun, it's all uniform. Yeah. Uh, but it also gives longevity to it as well. But Have you been up to product. his facility there? Uh, I haven't. We've like spoken on the phone so many times. We met in Toronto a few times. Yeah. Uh, but no, I haven't made it. Out I there. went up there and I went to go check it out. And I was just blown away. Like he's always, mm -hmm. it's like a kid in a candy store. Yeah. He's always testing things out. He's always trying to sample. And then he's got the mother nature out there that you could just leave it to test exactly. it, right? But I actually stumbled upon Thermoroy because we we're doing a very interesting project like in the core of Kensington Market in, in downtown Toronto. It's a pass, uh, sorry, not passive. It's an electric build, uh, 3,600 square foot commercial project. All solar panels on the roof. The whole thing is powered by 200 amps, if you could believe that. No Coming gas. from the source of the solar? No, the solar like helps to just offset the bills offset, okay uh but 200 amps the same that runs my house probably yours runs yeah. this like pretty massive commercial build and the client really wanted i mean it was very much focused on sustainability uh which is a lot of our focus and specialty as well uh, and they really wanted something that was sustainable and not uh you know something that's being uh, it's something that peddled exactly exactly and <laughs> marketed something that, and something that also felt uh just felt right for Kensington Market. It's such a yeah. vibrant neighborhood. It, it you don't want to. It fits in beautifully. You don't want to slap like siding, uh, standing seam, shiny metal yeah. on something. You want to like yeah. more masonry and net, like earthy products. So it, it was the perfect, perfect fit for that. My guys loved it. My like carpenters were installing it, like between mitered corners and all the details they're working with that we just we just started to like insert it into projects as being like, do you want to use this instead yeah. of whatever? And here's yeah. how much it costs. And then once they see the difference, they're into it. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful project. Did your product. crew, when I first tried it, the first thing I noticed was the extremely splinters. fine. No, no, the splinters <laughs> were nothing. They didn't bother me. The extremely fine dust. Yeah. Like yeah. extremely fine dust. For and sure. and it was a little bit irritating to me and I don't get really, I know some people are sensitive to cedar. I know all the guys started like as they typically do without any masks or gloves or anything. But by throw, the time they were you're done, they were, it on. they were using gloves just, yeah. and, and just face masks just for yeah. comfort, really. It's it's just got a weird process like regarding the sawdust part of it. For sure. It's but not the, the norm. It so, yeah, so it, nice. it's just really interesting. So then, okay, I mean, wait, it's not a thermary show. It's a ZZ show is yeah. what I want to talk about, so right? Plug them up. So <laughs> www.zzcontracting.com, <laughs> IG, ZZ Contracting, and then info at, uh, info at zzcontracting.com. You can reach them at 416-820-3401. I want to do a quick shout out to Aaron from Big Dog Out East there. Uh, he just had uh, International Flashing Day, which is August 26th. 
six, I think, every single year. Um, so I'm wearing his tee today, which is saying Flash Me. It's got nothing to do with Flash Me. <laughs> it's got everything to do with Flashing. I was wondering about that when <laughs> I met you. <laughs> big dog. Big dog. <laughs> I didn't see the back. It is, right? I didn't see so, the back. Are you ready to take your construction business to the next level? Consider joining the Construction Life's Tradespeople Alliance program, TAP, where skilled professionals connect, collaborate, and grow together. Our network is built on mutual respect and the shared goal of always building better. As a member, you'll have access to a wealth of resources designed to streamline your operations and attract more clients. From a 30-minute assessment call with myself to expert consultations in business, finance, and health, we've got you covered. Your business information will be featured at www.theconstructionlife.com, complete with certifications, logos, and geotargeting to help you reach the right audience. Promote your business with a 30-second advert across TCL social channels and our popular podcasts. Get exclusive access to TCL networking events and roundtable shows where you can connect with other tradespeople and general contractors, plus enjoy TCL merchandise, member-exclusive content, and a spot in the TAP directory online. We're going to promote you guys to homeowners across Facebook groups. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your business. Become a member of the Construction Life's Tradespeople Alliance program today and start reaping the benefits. Visit us at www.theconstructionlife.com for more details or DM us through any of the social platforms or text me directly at 416-433-5737 to learn more and consider being a TAP member today. Um, I want to like a word. How'd you get into construction? First of all, let's start there. Um, What's your background? I mean, my ba- my cultural background is Hungarian. Uh, you guys know a thing or two about building. A thing or two, yeah. <laughs> a thing or two thousand. Uh, my, my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. They came to Canada, so yeah. a lot about hard work. And like my grandfather instilled in me from a very early age, all you have is what you can do with your head and your hands. Um, I was a little bit of a troublemaker as a kid, and I got kicked out of camp. And then my parents were like, now you have to get a job. Uh, and so I started as a janitor. At what point in the camp did you get kicked out? The beginning, the end? Uh, I was closer to the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Closer to the end. Right. Okay. Well, so not bad. You learned a few about, lessons yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and in hindsight, it was actually the best thing that happened to me. If I think about it at the moment. But Where did you uh, end up going after that? So I started a job as a janitor for a building for like just a building out in Etobicoke. Did you think this is beneath me? I shouldn't be doing this. No. I was like, it I'll was listen, a job. I was like, I'll listen to my music. I'll. I'll paint the floors. I'll clean the pool. I don't care. I was nice. I, I had no problem with it at all. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people these days feel the same way, like in their when they're 16 years old. But I I saw it as a job, and really it was just like I'm going to get some money and then go back to school. I was a busboy at 13 years old. Yeah. Cleaning garbage, garbage bags, really stinky. Yeah, like like picking up rat day was pretty gross, but. Yeah, someone's got to do it. Picking up rat day? <laughs> like there was just a day. There's an I official would, day? I, I left it for the last day of the week because I just couldn't bear it. <sighs> but they're like in the, they're like scattered around and there's just a day I just would shovel them all up. <sighs> Were they big enough that you were contemplating whether they should have a leash? <laughs> Definitely not. No. <laughs> okay, all right. That was New more, York. That was more when I was like painting the three storage levels beneath the building and it's just like and there's endless just rows of yeah, like everything's oil-based paint back then. <sighs> <laughs> Perfect environment yeah. for them. Yeah, and for me. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I worked as a as a janitor there. Uh, the next summer, I, I got a job as an assistant property manager there. Um, I did that for two summers. Uh, I went to college, and when I came back, I was offered, like, a proper pr- property management job. Uh, but I started, like, a painting company with, my, with a good friend of mine uh, way back in the day. I would just paint people's houses in the summers and whatever, right. and it was just a bunch of buddies hanging out. Uh, what was the name of the company? ZZ Painting. Okay, yeah, makes sense. His name is Zach. Okay, it makes a lot of <laughs> sense. Okay. Still one of my closest friends. Yeah. Um, so uh, I was doing them in tandem. I was like, when I came back from college, I was running the painting company and then part-time at the property management, uh, which really helped me understand the world of like bidding on projects because I was just dealing with, at that point, I wasn't picking up rats. I was like dealing with all the sub trades, all the, I was managing 1,200 units. In, in Etobicoke. That's a lot of responsibility, man. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. What were you looking Non-stop to... Non-stop problem solving. What were you looking to buy? Or just you were hungry to build I, a nest? I just thought it was... I mean, honestly, they offered me a part-time job. I'm like, this will help me pay my bills and I'll try to run this painting company and see what happens. 
Um, I did that for about two years and then I, I, you know, left gracefully and, and branched out and started my own company. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was painting. And then when's the origin of ZZ contracting? So when I, when I branched out on my own was when like the company grew from being like, kind of like a, you know, two buddies painting your house and we're, yeah, we're all want to give fun. this a go kind of yeah, thing to being uh, like a proper organized company with employees. And it, it was, uh, like I took the better part of a year, like planning it before just saying, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, but where did you get your guidance, I guess, to plan it? Or did you just kind of look at I where the problems were and I'm like, I can solve this by doing this? Yeah, I think it was organically, to be okay. honest with you. I, was, I also wasn't running like the company I'm running today. I would do like a project and it would be my sole focus with a couple of like my guys who are, you know, very experienced. They'd be more experienced uh, carpenters than me, but I'd be better dealing with the clients and the all the back end side of the business. Um, but it was definitely organic growth. Like it didn't, yeah. it didn't just like explode. It, it took time and like working real hard at it. What's the difference of ZZ today compared to ZZ of yesterday? I mean, today. What's the one thing that stands out? I mean, today, there's so many things that stand out. But yeah. I, think our, I think our company is exceptional, uh, predominantly because of my staff, uh, who are guys who have like been with us for years. Uh, All employees or are you subbing or a mix? Uh, both. both. Okay. People, I mean, we have tons of subs, but yeah. we have like a full-time staff. Um, and they're like very capable, accomplished carpenters, skilled laborers, very handy guys. They're guys who like, we have very low turnover, if any. Uh, I did lose a guy recently cause he had to go back to Scotland to be with sick family. I'm hoping he comes right back around cause he was fantastic. But, um, no, like our guys are, are there to stay and, uh, because they care so much about the company as well. And there's a, a certain culture of like letting them know that they care and, you know, comes in many forms. Um, it all, it all just like compounds and feeds each other. What's the one thing Zeke that you do when you meet somebody new and you see potential in them that this kid, we'll just say kids because they're usually younger than us. Right. Um, can see this as a career. They don't see it as a job. Like I'm just filling time and I'm making money. Is there one thing? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. Really, yeah? If I'm being honest with you, my guys are a little, I mean, they're a little more older. We've had, like, younger guys come on board. So when you, let's talk about age. Are you talking about your guys are probably in their late 30s kind of thing? Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the young crop then, that's coming up, is they're in their 20s? Yeah, and we've had guys, like, you know, come in as, as general laborers. Guys come in for whatever it may be, even guys who, who are, you know, carpenter apprentice almost. But they just want to... Every time it's come, it, someone's come on board, they love the culture, they love the group of guys, but they're like, I want to do something else. Like, I don't want to just... Something else outside of construction or something no, else? No, it's like, like we had, uh, we had a co-op student that, that joined us for like a few weeks or whatever. He's a really nice guy. I liked him a lot. Um, and he wanted to be a carpenter. And so, you know, we started him. His first day, it was more test like, get him to sweep up all the floors and let him know that you got to work hard. Yeah. And then after that, it was like have them nail in the trim that has been measured like and then you start to gauge and then the reality was he just wasn't skilled enough to to excel from be that. doing those so he stayed nailing trim in. <laughs> he never got to a point where he could cut it and measure it properly and then he, he didn't was take a, the initiative to kind of ask can i do this can i try that he no didn't. i mean like the the site super above him was trying endlessly trying to give him tasks and he just like he just wanted he's like i want to I want to be on doing that, like more like the fine finish work. And it like, takes yeah, time, right? There's a reason there's like a 40 year old doing yeah, that finish work. Yeah. Um, but a very nice fellow. I just think it's, uh, it was just different expectations. He, I think he, he felt if he worked for two weeks, he should have like a lead carpentry role. And that's not the, that's not the way it works. We're like, were we ever like that? Like I, I never, I was more focused on trying to figure out how do I solve this problem that's in front of me? Yeah. And then how do I get better at it instead of me trying to figure out, I want that guy's position. Exactly. I think, I mean, I see, I see it a lot just in, in the culture of, of today that people just want like that, that get rich quick. Like I want to start a company. 
because like what Ontario has the most entrepreneurs and like anywhere in Canada. But like, well, the bulk of the populations here in this province is one province, right? Yeah, which is kind of a negative, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just um, but nobody ever guides these individuals on the pitfalls. Absolutely, you run a business, so you've seen losses and you've experienced losses, right? For sure, and not everything's perfect. So, but nobody ever wants to discuss that. Yeah, and just because you're good at your trade, you could be exceptional at your trade, doesn't mean you're a good businessman or woman, right? Like, 100 percent, and vice versa. So it's challenging to like. So when you do find somebody, what is the the I guess the green flag that you see that okay, I'm going to invest this into this kid, this person. You know, attitude, just attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Just attitude and, and a willingness and a go getter, not being late. I'll say it again, not being late. <laughs> <laughs> Do they not like, <laughs> I, I, I mean, back when we were growing, how, how old are you, man? I'm 39. Oh, you're still a kid, man. I'm in my 50s. So it's just like we used to have alarm clocks that we had to like analog and, you know, roll them up. And that was our nowadays. You can put a thousand alarms on your phone to wake you up, right? Yeah. So I don't understand how anybody's late. You're you're late because you're on purpose late. Yeah, you've designed it that way to be late. Oh, the there's no of opportunity. Excuses I've heard from the site supervisors of why so and so the the new guys late or whatever is just it's bonkers. It's bonkers. Like what? Missed the train? Missed the streetcar? Missed? Missed what? Well, I'll keep I'll keep it PG. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to. A, be. Guy, a, a guy went to Muskoka. Uh, he was a great guy. He was a nice guy. I'll say he went to Muskoka for uh, like whatever a weekend with his buddies. Okay, yeah. And he got a lot of mosquito bites. Okay. And he couldn't come to work on Monday because of his mosquito bites. Okay. That was the reason. That was the reason. Yeah. How many is a lot we're talking about here? Pardon me? How many is a lot? <laughs> I don't know. Like a hundred or something <laughs> like that? Was he, uh, he did incubated to, in a tent or no, something? He like, he I got don't mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes in Muskoka. You got to watch out. Yeah, then go inside. <laughs> exactly. I don't understand. So don't did he show up at work with the residue of all the bites? No, he did show up on Tuesday and just got like ripped all day. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone was just giving it to him, like <laughs> itchy, itchy. Yeah, with those mosquito bite slaps on the back, but all in good fun. And he was, he was a good guy. He was pretty new back then, but he he stuck around for like two months or something. But he had to go back. Uh, I had to go back home as well. Zeke, how much of the new generation gets excited about seeing the drawings? And as you know, you see drawings, and a person who's got the passion for those drawings begins to visualize the end result. And how much of the young, younger generation is looking at that step where it's like, let's take this two dimensional sketch, this drawing, this approved, you know, formal kind of layout of, of a project, and we now have to construct it. Do they not get excited about the potential? Like when I see your projects, I get excited. I mean, you've tackled interesting projects where it's like laneway builds which are logistically difficult but creatively aesthetically pleasing to the eye and i'm like i want to take challenge i want to take that piece of paper and turn it into a structure that people are going to walk by and look at it and go who built that yeah you know like do do they not look at those possibilities i think most people don't appreciate how much time goes into the planning just to get to like never mind the render stage but like an issue for construction stage of like i can build off this document like this is our Bible for this project. It takes so much planning. It takes a good architect. Yep. It takes a lot of communication, a lot of communication with the client, which so often the client, they, they, they just aren't, the expectations aren't set from the get go that like, just cause you hired really good, a good dream team of a architect, designer, builder, you still have to like be available. A lot of input. If you're not being re- like reciprocal with information, things just don't flow as fast. It so, just doesn't end there. Yeah. It actually starts there. So never mind the new generation. It's it's that that process of getting to actual like plans you can price a project off of and yep. build them off of is is so overlooked. Like I get pr- multiple emails a day, people with like you know their committee of adjustment plans or like a floor plan being like, how much does this cost? And it's like, how much does what cost? Don't like, know what the question is being asked yeah, here. Like there's there's zero, there's zero like finished specifications. Never mind, no structural engineering, no mechanical engineering. Where's the like eighty pages I need to tell you how much it costs? Um, We've had but, architects in here where I brought that up. I'm yeah. like, 
the good old days, you can take any drawing, any set of drawings, and, and anybody that's got two cents in construction could figure it out to build it because all the information was there. Yeah. Today, there's a lot of missing information. Absolutely. Which yeah. is a challenge for builders, and you can't always have that stamp and it's as a per a contractor on site. And yeah, and it's a challenge for us too because sometimes we're given a project or a client hires us, they give us a retainer for a project, let's say a year before it's, it's like ready to go because they know they want to work with us. We've had, you know interactions i brought them to sites to see how our, how they look how they operate meet some of our guys uh so we have a fair number of people who will who will give us a retainer far in advance saying we don't know much the project costs but we know you want to build it it's a lot of trust is, which is wonderful yeah, it yeah. Is. our entire our entire model is just built off of like off of like high quality work like excellence and trust and that's really all that it's about Attention homeowners and businesses. Are you looking for top-notch electrical contracting services you can trust? Consider the expert tradesperson behind Effect Electric LTD. They take pride in delivering quality, service, and professional installation on time and on budget. From Kohler generators to main service upgrades or network data installation, they do it all. With years of experience and a commitment to excellence, Carlo and his team at Effect Electric LTD are your go-to professionals for all your electrical and generator needs. Effect Electric LTD is an authorized Kohler home energy generator dealer. Kohler has air cool 26 RCA units, the quietest, the most powerful, and exceptionally durable generator with 109 amps max power on liquid propane. Custom color options, camouflage options, and every generator Kohler makes is built to last and is equipped with a commercial grade engine. Call Effect Electric LTD today at 416-508-7725 or visit them at effectelectricltd.kohlergeneratordealer.com. Let's build something great together. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? We, have, we get brought on board. You get a retainer, uh, far, basically. Far before the project is, is ready to be priced. And then when we get the plan, we're saying, well, there's a whole bunch of other things that are just going to be omitted because they're not in it, in the drawings, you know, like all kinds of details, but all kinds of things that are missing. So, I mean, even in that dynamic, it's all about being uh, collaborative and working together and you reach out to the architect and designer to get clarification. But at the end of the day, if it can't be given to you because the clients haven't picked their millwork, yep. like finish yet, it just goes on the omissions list and it's all there in front of everybody. It's interesting, Zeke, that, most clients can't get to the point of asking the question of how much people really don't like people really don't like telling you how much they, they, their budget they, is they I, tell you that. I know they skirt they mm -hmm. totally skirt around it but the thing is they hire somebody to start the ball rolling it's generally not the contractor and i think it should be the contractor at first i think you should have a gc in your corner because they're going to give you the fairest representation of what this potentially might cost if you go down this road absolutely but it's good bring in the architect bring in the designer and i think the, we also offer sorry to interrupt yeah. we can also offer like at least an experienced builder can offer insight where you see a certain plan like in one scenario we saw a mechanical plan that's tied to like hydronic solar it made it just made no sense so we're like what about talking to our own mechanical uh trades and specialists we came up with a plan like what if we do it like this it costs the client 30 grand less and it's far more efficient and did it, it work less space hydronic solar did it work really well, well? we changed it to a like a different a different solar a different solar panel sort of use but it was still the solar energy con uh, creating uh, radiant system yes but in a different just with different but you needed mechanicals. a mechanical person to dive into this conversation Absolutely. yeah We're so i reached out to my my tray and i'm like look i know yeah this is a pain in the ass i, I basically said can you quote this project and he said no because it makes no sense i'm like well can you put can you just give it a go on how it should look and we had a few conversations and he put together like a a proposal for it he's saying it's all based on the mechanical engineering being changed and whatnot but it's based on modifications though yeah like the, the mechanical permit will need a uh, revision there's no question about it but that's, we're, that's we're, small potatoes compared to building to what something they that makes no with. sense with yeah, kids everywhere like it, nothing made sense about it where i was going with that is that the moment that somebody whether it's the architect or the designer or the gc just plants that number 
that number is so branded in the client's mind yeah. that it starts to upset them, upset them when the number starts going way too high above that. Like I never give numbers on the spot. You can't. It's insane. It's impossible. Yeah. If you're doing that, you're only doing it to get the job. Yeah. And, and then you're going to modify the course of trust during the process. And then you get into a dynamic where there's just like, there's, yeah, like you said, distrust with the client. There's this tension. It's just like, it should never be like that. It should just be an easy, open relationship. It should be the right person giving you the right number based on what you're looking for. But in all but fairness- to, But you have to know what you want. Exactly, back to the <laughs> client. You have to, like I've heard recent stories, clients were refusing to make the decision on a door and like a purchasing of doors. Mm -hmm. And they're being told it's a 23 week yeah. rollout before you get this door. So you need to make this decision. So we're talking about half the year before you receive this door. Yeah. So can you please make a decision? Well, the numbers are really high on all the options that we have out there. Then you still need to make a decision. Mm -hmm. It's just you're being told by manufacturers this is what it's going to cost, but you don't want to make the decision. But we're telling you, you're 23 weeks out. Yeah. So if you make this decision today, that tanker is going to show up in yeah. you know six months. Yeah. So it's like, then we have that conversation because what's going to happen is five months of when's it going to arrive? When's it going to arrive? When's it, sure. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Every, every project has like planning and sequencing like that. And it's just you ha like windows and doors. It's not like the COVID days where it took 18 weeks. Yeah. It went from being six it's to eight weeks. To like now, today. Yeah, it's 12 weeks, whatever it may yeah. be. But, but there's still every single custom product has turnaround. Like we have a project with custom limestone that's being polished and cut now. And it takes 18 weeks, and we're expecting it next week. And we ordered it 18 Why weeks ago. Why such a huge window? Where's is a specific limestone coming from? A specific yeah, it's a specific. That's why. Well, specific uh, sapien veined limestone. I'm very excited to see it. Which I do appreciate because a lot of your work. I'm, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm seeing a lot of natural clients are asking for natural nowadays, or they still go in the uh, man-made. Uh, I mean, I guess both. Uh, I definitely love the natural. I'm a yeah. huge fan of natural. Uh, even when it comes to, you know, things like, you know, marble inside your home and things like that. But I love it. There's practical considerations. Like, you know, my wife hates me that I put like dolomite marble in our kitchen. Cause like, I'm just nuts about people putting their wine glass down and stuff like that. So but that, you can clean that yeah. and you can repair it. It may have not been the best decision, you know being a young dad at the time, but I was still, That's at the time I, I didn't know, it. I didn't know what the hell was in front of going to going to happen in front of me at the time. <laughs> but Dolomite's a beautiful stone. Yeah. It's when gorgeous. you when it's, when it's nicely installed it's and put together, yeah, it's yeah, gorgeous, yeah. right? And I feel like we take care of it. So it still looks beautiful, but. But the kids, but don't eat sushi and, and have soy sauce splashing all over the place. Then it becomes a. Go to the table. No, I don't understand. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but the thing is, kitchens are supposed to be worn in. Yeah. And things happen in kitchens. It's yeah. just how it is, right? Tomato it's, sauce and whatever. It's harder for me to let go of those things than than for most. Like but I then, want my I want my I want everything that I, I touch to like remain perfect. Even when I go back to You don't like the aging, an, the an wear old, and tear? I like the wear and tear. No, of like certain of certain elements for yeah. sure. Yeah. Not like staining on marble. But yeah, the aging of thermal ash, yes, I love very much. But um, now they have the the films. You got the yeah. guys putting the film. I've never yeah. I need to get somebody on the show about that, right? So I've never seen it. They say it's protective. I have a project I actually need it for that I'm like, it's like on my to-do list to hunt someone down for that. I'm just curious to see if it's worth it to do yeah. that, right? Or is it going to feel like I bubble, at least like almost the 70s where you're putting plastic over how your furniture? How much does it cost when you're already paying a premium to get? To get the product itself. Yeah, But it's you can't compare natural stone, for instance, to like quartz. Like it's like can see like the the beauty that's been pulled out of the earth versus like something that's in a factory yeah i think if you're doing natural stone there should be like a trip automatically attached to the cost of the the stone so you can go to the quarry and i i, I still to this day i idea. want to i would, I would love, love to, to see that. that big slab yeah fall on that you know little you mound a sucker for like watching those Instagram oh i love that <laughs> i love that man you're like you're just watching it's like the slowest thing ever and you're just watching yeah. it going oh, this is the best i got my <laughs> kids running around my wife's like what are you doing I'm like nothing I'm like watching like I'm watching this just cut slabs out of a quarry <laughs> and you're watching it fall and you're like yeah that's amazing it's perfect and i i, I the other thing i want to ask you was um you've done the what's the, what's the official name of the the closed wall railings the the drywall wall railings on staircases oh like the those like sculptural yeah what yeah what's that like the official construction name for that or design? sculptural guard something to that effect sculptural staircase. have you ever seen that with an open riser staircase 
I have not. I'm wondering if it would it work. Could, it could, it could work. It could work. You'd ha- it would have to be like new construction. Like oh, we no, did, 100%. We did you one can't recent, retro. Yeah, yeah, we did one recently where it was a linear staircase that we had to like turn into a spiral staircase that was pretty beautiful when it came out. Uh, but if you did it with like new construction with, you know, structural steel and, and elements that are factored into. It's think, beautiful looking, could. right? It is, yeah. It but is. I go back to the kids and pets. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, it's still, even, you know, level five mudding, it's still drywall. It's still drywall. Like you, and if you're moving furnishings up and down? Yeah, and you take a, uh, if a table leg, chair leg hits it, it's going to dent it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there any way of making it? And I don't think I've ever seen anybody make it out of wood. I mean, the the ones that we do have wood, like Frame. flexible wood behind it. Yeah. But no, I've never seen it. Like you, I guess just to get that perfectly smooth finish, you got to skim it somehow. Yeah, I just, I was just like, I don't think I've ever seen it. Maybe I haven't come across it, but an open riser staircase with that detail, because yeah. that detail just, it just, it does something different mm-hmm. for the, uh, for the staircase, something in a, a much more, Play, pleasing way it yeah. does something different which i like a lot that would be gr- to see the light coming through that's the why be, that that's be why cool. yeah right and then i guess the the design element would be how do you make the intersection of the tread connecting to the actual wall yeah you know you the, that, like cantilever it into yeah, the wall yeah yeah throw some lights on it and I don't know. I'm something. not a designer. I just, I, you I might just, be. I know. I look at other people's work like yours and I just look at it and I'm like, that's beautiful. Like, that's stunning. But I mean, how else would, how would you do this? Because I am a big fan of mm-hmm. open riser staircases for yeah. that reason. There's always darkness underneath, whatever. No more. Normally people spend a lot of time and money and effort on the main staircase. Yeah. But it blocks the basement staircase. For sure. Right. And then it doesn't really open up after that because you're on the second floor. You're opening it up maybe with vaulted ceilings or a skylight or something like that so the light's all there but then Absolutely. you're you're getting no, rid of light run yeah to, that run to the basement is always a little dark and you got to figure out how do we light this now at that yeah. point right which is always a challenge yeah but i mean are you also i mean i'm not a designer either so yeah i don't know no, but you, you have you're given a drawing and i go back yeah. to the a two-dimensional paper yeah and now here you go build a staircase right? yeah but it's like sometimes you're given a pinterest image and it's like build this and then it's like i go to my mill worker being like design this and then they put it together and then together we create it as it is it was funny that i had another builder tim from uh ravine view and he sent me your kitchen the one kitchen with the marble and there was a floating marbles shelf by the cooktop yeah and then the rounded island yeah right and then i was that's like that's absolutely kitchen. stunning man yeah. like that's beautiful and even the the marble shelf that goes through the cooking area fabricators and gorgeous job who, who, who did you get to do that it was costa marble it's nice it's it's, it's artwork like what the was way that they, that's 3cm they, right and the way yeah and the way they book match it all together with slabs is just it's gorgeous it's not just like you need this many slabs plop them all together some real time and effort goes into that and that's like the difference of uh you know a builder and a sub who like actually takes pride in their work where it's like you want to make it the most beautiful thing it could possibly be with the materials that have been picked see to me i look at that and i'm like that's a beautiful functional kitchen Mm -hmm. it works on every level like it actually looks beautiful yeah but it also works i don't i have the designer did a fantastic job too like the rounded corners it's 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 a beautiful just i'm almost a fan of the rounded over a waterfall yeah you know what i mean where everyone's it's more going practical 100 percent. yeah now you could do a waterfall around it yeah but that's gonna be quite the bill yeah attached <laughs> to that stone to i and i've done that yeah, i've, no I've bent stone right yeah for sure. well you don't bend stone you carve stone out a certain yeah, way it's like a, cut it out and then round it's it's just crazy labor intensive it's insane right even just to get those on that specific kitchen to get the rounded the rounded edge that yeah. can all around. It's not a it's not a bull nose, it's something else. Or is no, it, a, it is a bull nose that's been like it just created on the round as well and it's not laminated. Like I remember the even I was talking to the the fabricators, like this would be so much easier if it was just a laminated edge where you have like two pieces together and you see that line. Yeah. And the designer's like, No. No, I don't want to see the line. Yeah. And I'm like, Good for you. So how did they <laughs> so they basically literally mechanically carved it then? Yeah, and they like they cut out the back and they form it. Yeah, yeah. They basically they said something like just that detail is going to add whatever was a week or two to the turnaround. But that's the detail that everyone's going to notice. Yeah, 
No, it's gorgeous. So it's worth it at that point, it's right? It's gorgeous. That we're must do, have been we're doing another, another like a pretty awesome dining room table out of like a similar kind of material with also a bullnose edge and like uh, ribbed white oak base to it. It's kind of more just like a very cool project for a past pro client. And they're like, no, we're going laminate edge. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll see the line. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Consider expert plumbing and drains. When it comes to plumbing, you need someone who's not just skilled, but truly cares about the job they do. Someone like Aaron Bolin and his team at Expert Plumbing and Drains. Aaron has been in the trade for years, and he's built his reputation on one thing, commitment. Commitment to his craft, his crew, and most importantly to you, the client. At Expert Plumbing and Drains, it's not just fixing pipes. It's about delivering the best possible service every single time on every single project. So whether you're dealing with a leaky faucet, a stubborn drain, or plenty of full plumbing overhaul, Aaron and his team are ready to tackle it all with skill, integrity, and a passion for excellence. Need help now? Call Expert Plumbing and Drains at 905-531-4111. That's 905-531-4111. Or visit them at www.expertplumbinganddrains.com and on social media at Expert Plumbing and Drains Canada. Experience the difference of working with a team that's dedicated to getting the job done right. Because at Expert Plumbing and Drains, your satisfaction is their top priority. You can also email Aaron directly at Aaron at expertplumbinganddrains.com. Expert Plumbing and Drains, where expertise meets care. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. <laughs> I, I also do like, I don't know if it's like the designers that you're working with, but obviously everyone's been paying attention to a little bit of Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah, I love the integrated desks that are I'm seeing in, in your projects in certain rooms, like the study and stuff yeah, like that. And, yeah. and and I'm like, everybody does that for built-ins, but nobody really factors in. Hang on a sec, we can do that for a desk where you're doing this curved white oak, and for it's sure. part of the wall. You know what I mean? Like this is where it's going to live. This is Absolutely. this is the detail. Like millwork is where a project really shines. You can really tell the difference between something that's just like good and something that's like exceptional. Yeah, and that's when you want a person who wants. Either they're a junior and they want to excel and they mm -hmm. want to try it out and step up to it, great. Or you get a, a, a seasoned person that I could totally pull this off, no problem. Absolutely. But have somebody shadowing that person yeah. because you want to educate that person on how you would pull this off. But even when we when we pick our mill workers, say we get a, a, a project package for pricing, a thorough one, and we the see, book. yeah, and the we book. see depending on the specifications, if it's you know wood veneer or if it's something out of metal or whatever it may be, or micro cement or whatever, they're all different kind of mill workers you would hone in on. Yeah. Like if there's metal involved, if there's reeded glass, like uh, if it's like wood focused. Um, so we would take, take that drawing and send it to like three of our mill workers that are best suited for that project. Usually one of them won't be able to make the timeline, something like that. And you sort of just start to piece together who like the, the perfect team is for this like yeah. project. Do you like doing the um, the laneway projects? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I like them very much. Uh, How much is the, the logistics of it? It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare, it's a nightmare. right? I personally am, am <laughs> fortunate enough to sit uh, in my office most of the days, like or good and bad, of course. Like I, I do two days in the field a week, but my my site supervisor, my project manager, they're the ones who have to deal with that day to day. And it's just a huge soak of time and energy. Um, but it's it's every, like, look, as you get your, like a framing package for a new build, you typically have the space to have it all laid out, laid in the right order, stacked the way you need it. And for like a laneway project, you do a floor by floor because there's nowhere to put anything. There's no bins, it's live. You're going loads. right from flatbed right yeah. to site. The drywall gets delivered and popped in through the windows in the same go. Um, but I mean, the laneway, I love the laneway sort of initiative for obviously filling a gap in Toronto of like making use of underused sure. spaces. And I, I really like that like value creation. Uh, but we also, we focus on, I mean, we're fortunate enough to, to get a lot of leads. We, we focus on more meaningful laneway projects. Like we're yep. not, we're not interested in just like the regular old black and white. A rental. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, even, uh, we just finished one on Concord that we just posted a reel of yesterday, 
Uh, that one's a, a two bedroom rental, but it's still like just it's meticulously designed. Yeah, it's, the, the client took yeah. extra, like she knew what she wanted and, and had good taste and whatnot. Um, and so, like you know, rental should be beautiful too for Toronto. They shouldn't all be like shit and like have like terrible landlords I and know. property managers don't respond to anything and all that. Um, How's the city been? They've been okay because I mean I've just like stories for like tickets. And no, not tickets. No, no, no. It's not like that. It's just the permit process and getting approvals and moving this along. And I'd say the biggest problem is is how hit or miss your examiner is that you get. If you get somebody who's on it, you can get like. With the right architect, you can get a fast track permit turned around, look at he split. Yeah. You have all your ducks in a row. Yeah. It's different for a new bill, it's different for whatever. But um, we, we've had scenarios where we're like, we had a project that is hopefully going to be starting this fall. In all likelihood, it will probably be starting more like next April at this rate. Um, because you got to pull the trigger and go, well, listen, do we want to go through winter on this one? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right? You'll save more money if we wait them a few months. Yeah. Exactly. And truthfully, there's still some figuring out to do in terms of budgeting and, and finishes and such. But uh, like with that one, they got an examiner. It was just a nightmare. It took them, like they got their committee of adjustment. All That was all buttoned up and whatnot. That was the point where the client reached out to us. But the permit process was almost, it was like 10 months or something like that. It was insane. And it was like... This is the problem that I have. Yeah, the first time it was like, instead of responding within two weeks, they responded in four saying, you're missing a detail. This is all stuff for the consultants. Like, I just see it on the email chains. You're missing a racking detail for the solar panels. Okay, fine. Put the, they submit the racking detail like a few days later. Then we, the architect follows up two weeks later. Oh, that guy's on vacation. And then it never got shuffled to anybody else. Then that guy went, like, just left. And the, the file just sat on someone's desk that wasn't working there anymore. And then they got a new examiner who, like, found all other issues to peel apart. And it's like, oh, with the mechanical, there's an issue here. And there isn't an ERV system and, you know, stuff that they should catch. But it's, it's all, it's just so subjective based on the examiner. And the examiner could be responsive or not. Like, I've had scenarios where... Like I have a real estate portfolio of my own that I've I've built over the years, and I've had a scenario where like I'm the client and the builder, yep. and you know a friend of mine's the architect, and you know if there's a delay, like it's costing me money, so I'm getting on the phone, and I'm calling of course. the city, I'm saying what's going on with the examiner, and had to actually like email his superior to like, and not from like the Z Kaplan ZZ contracting, from like the homeowner, the client. I I am the per <laughs> I'm the person who owns this property. Yeah. And it's, it's embarrassing that you have to, like, do that to somebody just to get a response. And then the senior will say, so-and-so, please respond to this matter right away. And you'll get a response the next week. And it's, like, it's just painful. Which isn't what's being sold when it comes to the media bites, when we get the politicians talking no. about we need more housing, because I agree with what you said earlier, that this is a huge opportunity for more housing. Yeah, it's a But huge, it's you got builders problem. who are itching to do this. Like, there's not just yourself. There's other builders that want to get into this scope. But the unfortunate thing is they're hearing about all these stories, right? Mm -hmm. I've had a guy on the show where last year we talked about it, and he was getting railroaded by the city because they didn't want him to tie into the water service that was closer on the side street instead of they wanted him to force him to go through the house that's not being built it was an existing structure right ultimately he got the approval to go through the side and i'm like you just wasted it just took forever. six months or something like that Never to give us the approval money. yeah like that's not the way to move this forward and and so it makes me question when you start talking about city officials and i know that certain city officials listen to the show and then i'll get a dm and then they'll like they'll say things like we're overworked understaffed we don't have, there's too many going on mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. I get it. Then why don't you fix those problems then? Uh, so he's got all kinds of problems. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that all we're doing is we're trying, we have, we have. It's we all have reactive a, is the problem. Yeah. It's all reactive. You can't, we have to be pro. So if you want to do this media bite, like we need more housing, then guess what? The crew, the workforce, they're ready, mm -hmm. but we can't move forward. Uh, and if we do, we go illegally. And right. then we get fined. And what's the point of that? There's no point of doing that, right, at that point. Yeah. And we're not talking about we're shoddy builders here. We actually want to build it. We're interested. But if we're missing a little detail here and there, like... Oh, for sure. I mean, I think even you look at, like, the city's own building, never mind approving permits, which should be, like, if it's all in order and you just need more staff to pump them, pump out approvals or, or feedback, like, get them, never mind for the taxes we pay, but... 
even this, the city's own projects where it's like they had that, uh, I only, I'm, I'm only honed into it because we have this project in Kensington Market, but like that green pea that's turning into a city development, it's been in the works for years they've been talking about it, and they finally green lit it, which is wonderful. And it's gonna have affordable housing because there's all kinds of homelessness there, all the kinds of stuff you need, but they've green lit it. It's gonna take five years to build, like we need it now. And it's going to destroy the neighborhood in terms of the construction and uh, the way this it's going to This is in Kensington Market? Yeah. Is it a pretty big green pea? Or yeah. Yeah, it's the, the only one. So was there, I guess it had to, really? As far as I know, it's going to have tons of parking underground too. But for however long the project's going on, there's not going to be a place to park there. The city needs to understand that you cannot drive all the cars out. Because not only are you talking about the visiting cars, you're talking about the servicing cars. Every yeah. structure that's in the city requires servicing vehicles to go there to maintain those structures. Absolutely. So you can't eliminate. You Nobody, just deliveries. I don't know a single contractor. I know there was Greener, Greener Builds or something like that. He prided himself on building a workforce that bicycle to work. Right. He would... Um, ship everything beforehand with a trailer all the tools and everything that be on the site something to be said about which is great it's wonderful and then your crew you know great it's it's like you live in the city and you can ride your bicycle and you can take your bike lanes and get to the job site it's wonderful it doesn't work so well in the winter months yeah i haven't reached that level of sustainability my guys are still in their pickups i just i don't it's a great it's a good button but the problem is that i don't think i think we need more people who have workwear calling the shots on how the construction industry gets built yeah that's what i would think right i don't think you need more people that i can only assume these a lot of these examiners that are reviewing drawings have never been on job sites i'm assuming yeah they probably come from the paper side of the business which is architect and drafting and things like that mm -hmm. and they can read and they know the code and everything like that but get on the job site once in a while and try to get an understanding of the logistics here and what's happening yeah i will say that like at least on the calling for permanent inspection side it happens quite quickly and it's they've been good yeah i've never had issue with toronto inspectors i've always got no, along like, with them really well well yeah. there was one that hinted at an envelope i was like easy there <laughs> <laughs> no they're they're pretty good they're pretty good i was like let me go through the regular process i don't have the envelope and we'll just get through and get the permit done that's there was all. an old school guy <laughs> used to send a bottle of wine to every every uh december but he actually he actually threw the towel in <sighs> I guess that would have been, yeah, back in the day, right? A yeah. little bottle here underneath the hard yeah. hat, right? But, uh, no, for the most part, they, they also keep the inspectors, like, they change very rapidly so that they're, like, always in, moving to different areas. But we have good relationships with all of them. Tons of them, we have, like, their cell phone numbers, call them out just right away. Uh, but it, pr pretty much within 48 hours, we'll get a spot inspected. And oftentimes, like, if they know you're a reputable builder, they'll take pictures, you know, you can always just get a stamped engineer if you really need to keep going and inspector isn't available. Um, so there's ways to, to keep them keep the project moving for sure. I, st I still think that builder wise, I think if you're a legitimate builder and you're in good standing and you've got the portfolio to prove that you've, you know, permitted this job, did this job, full inspections, everything got signed off. A proper clean site. Yeah, everything. Uh, like you, you get hoarding you get and everything. Gold yeah. stars or something like that. For I sure. think that you should be on a list with the city going, if ZZ is taking over this project, this is their project right now, there should be a priority list. I That'd think. That would be great. ESA does it. <laughs> ESA does it yeah. with, with electricians and their companies yeah. and they'll they'll get the phone in permit inspections. For sure. I love those. Which is great. It speeds yeah. things up because the last thing I, I hate as much as I love talking to Sparkies on a job site, mm -hmm. I hate seeing them sit around and they can't do anything because they have to wait for an inspection to come. For sure. I can't stand that. And the point that they're calling for inspection is like we need the green light so we can insulate and we're like ready to go. Um, so, so I no, think it goes, there should it goes be a, a preferred way. list, yeah. man. I, I definitely that would be cool. But we'll they have won't a whole do other it. show just on, on on the problems of Toronto. They won't do it because <laughs> I think people f they focus on the rubbernecking. They're like, "Oh, there's too many bad builders," and, and I go, "Then mm -hmm. streamline it, like get rid of these bad builders." As simple as that, right? Yeah. But I don't like. There's, I don't know. I think first of all, they should get rid of Terion. That's just my opinion. Yeah. But because I don't think they do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it gives peace of mind, but what does it really do? I don't doesn't know. do anything. I've heard so many stories of clients going through a horror story mm -hmm. and then having to go through and rely on Terion, and then all of a sudden they don't do anything about it. And I'm like, well, hang on a sec. You're supposed to be watching my back here. 
yeah sure we hired the wrong contractor and they did a terrible job but you're not watching my back here now yeah so it, it becomes challenge at that point i think if you want to build an association then you better deliver on that point yeah i think there's definitely value to carry on but there's there's holes in it for sure and well the rumor now isn't that they're going to change it up or something yeah they always want to change it up every so often yeah keep, uh, keep the guessing introducing alt labor solutions the game changer for contractors and laborers. Are you a contractor needing skilled labor or have labor in need of quick shifts? Or how about buying, selling, or renting tools, material, and equipment? Connect easily with contractors and find resources hassle-free through Alt Labor Solutions online platform. Post job listings with project details, browse public resumes, and choose the right person for the job. Explore their job board for new opportunities and connect with top talent. Alt Labor Solutions revolutionizes the labor industry with a user-friendly interface, secure payments, and a supportive team. Visit them at altlaborsolutions.com and start connecting with other contractors today. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. What are you thinking about all the new future building that's coming down the pipe? I mean, like, listen, I'm, I'm all about sustainability, and I've joked several times with clients and people in the industry that if you want to build sustainable, don't build that's the best sustainability yeah. out there. Yeah. But I get it. Also, the rules out of building a, a structure today are getting a little too extreme Yeah. regarding what they think is carbon. And um, I find it interesting that they're trying to push these new initiatives that are going to be coming down the pipe 2030. And I purposely think it's going to drive a lot of people out of the industry. They're going to fold up shop and not deal with this. It could. It could. I mean, there's all kinds of problems, but the, the cost of construction, too, is like... Where's the cost going to go? It's it, going to go to the client. Yeah. it's only so gonna gonna, You're not going to eat it as a builder. For sure. So you have to give it to the client. The client's sure. going to go, well... At a certain point, it's like, is it worth building It's not sustainable? It's not at that point, right? It depends. I mean, I, a lot of it... I'd say the projects that we do that are sustainable with green roofs and solar panels, those are... I'd say all of them are, are more passion projects than like you know, ROI driven. And it's like somebody who is, you know, has these, just has the, that, that's something that they really want to do and we really want to do it for them. But I've yet to see someone do it because it makes good dollars and cents, you know? I, it, because it doesn't. No. I look, it adds to the cost of construction. It adds a lot to the cost of which construction. Which is already really high. And like, I mean, when I first got into construction, I started, I was very actively involved in learning more about geothermal. Yeah. And once I started doing the data dump and trying to it's figure the same out, thing, yeah. it, it's like, okay, hang on a sec. I'm not going to benefit from this. The next owner is going to benefit from this mm -hmm. because I'm putting all the money in the upfront to get this done. But the only way it works in that model is yeah. if you're holding on to it in perpetuity. We're talking, yeah, yeah, we're talking. Like you want to give it to like your kids, which is not really looking very interesting these days. But it's still look the the cost of gas, the cost of electricity is only going up. Yeah, so it's only gonna. It's only going to offset more and more and more, um, but it's it's a problem for sure. Like when we get plans that call for all these green initiatives, solar panels are usually the first things to go budget wise because it's like it's a want. It's not like like you need the house to be heated. You need the house to have this, that, and the other thing. Solar panels you can put on later, and we've done pl plenty of projects where it was in the plan, not in the budget. So when we're framing the house we just run a conduit from the mechanical room up to the roof and whenever you want to put the solar in it's as easy as you know you can already dragging the fish it. line the yeah fish line. you point. don't have to have things dangling all around but you're structurally already preparing for it too yeah anyway. yeah you're framing for it and for it's, it yeah but uh in that scenario you don't have to dish out the money for the per for the solar permit for the panels the install all of that and you can offset it to whenever you got the cash for it but but nobody ever talks about no so, one's no one's talking about like well maybe i should get like less nice plumbing fixtures instead <laughs> or maybe i shouldn't get marble i should get court. like people like they want what they want they want the fancy stuff for, for good reason they but, want all that extreme fancy stuff but also not everybody but you know you correct me if i'm wrong want. but there's an expiry date on solar panels right they yeah. eventually start to wear out where they're not collecting as much as they do at the original for sure they, they have start like a shelf life but they also come with warranties and such like that like our the ones that we use all have 30 year warranties on it so that's that's a pretty solid chunk of time but there's no government initiative to actually use that 
And that's another thing that mm -hmm. I think, like, you don't get rebates from it. No, you just get, like, your hydro bills are less. That's all it is. Like, I have it on my own house, and it just makes my bills $90 instead of $300, which is so great. Let's, but let's talk I about put, the... I've spent more money than that putting them in. Let's talk about the mafia that's known as the hydro. Like, it's... I don't think... it. I think it's... You want to build sustainable? You should offer Canadian citizens, whether they're in Toronto or and it doesn't matter what city it is, you should offer them the right to completely get off the grid. Yeah. Because we're not allowed that. No. You have to still have a meter and you still have to tie into the grid. Yeah. And if we can, which we know, we can build a structure off the grid. Yeah. Give us that opportunity. They're not allowing that. No. More and more clients, I bet you any money, would be like, we're going solar. Yeah. We will get rid of the wolf. We're going solar because we're <laughs> going to be off the grid. Yeah. I want to come into my house. I want to walk around my house and I don't want to see a meter on my house. It, it'll, you know, fast forward 50 years, it'll probably be more common conversation. But that's, a, that's an effective way of being sustainable and yeah. being conscious to the environment. We're not on your grid. So this one house here is not contributing to a carbon footprint for this, this hydro component of it. Yeah. And if we can keep on, like, listen, I'm a huge fan of live roofs. Yeah. Plants on, on a roof. Green roofs are pretty, they're pretty cool. Like, I'm a huge fan of, of figuring out old school I'll show ways. I'll some cool pictures. We just finished one last week. Well, who would you end up using for the green roof, yeah. Zinco. I know Zinco, Zinco really Canada, well. They're yeah. good guys. Yeah, yeah I've very, been to their facilities. They're very organized. Yeah, they they're know great. their deal, right? Which is really good. And mm -hmm. I, and why don't we have more of those? Like, especially all the, the laneway homes because there's a, a cap. Well, you know, they the don't want to... Reason, the only reason you don't have it is because it costs more. Because you have to... Yeah, your roof joists have to be, you know... It's, it's different structural buildup to different structural assembly. Then the government should be like, the, okay, well, like I have a major problem with one third of the development cost goes to the government. Yeah. Like that's never been the case, right? No, and now it is. And that's a lot of money that's going to the government. No, that's killer. So it's like, if you really want to talk about in green initiatives, we're giving them to you. Yeah. The clients are more than willing. Like they want to get off the grid and they want to have a green roof. We're saving the trouble about asphalts, which are another petroleum product. And we don't have to create that product. So we're not contributing to that. We're keeping the structure cooler. So we're not using the consumption of power to AC to, to cool things down. Yeah. I mean, they could, they could snap their fingers and offer an initiative that would get everybody wanting to put solar in. Like, I don't know, you, you pay it in 10 years, put the solar in now. If they want all of us to come off of gas and come and only use electric. Yeah. I want to use solar. Yeah. I mean, we get a lot of sun and then we have battery backups and we'll store it for the winter months, right? Because we have our yeah. shorter days of, of, of sun, right? Mm -hmm. But that's that's where, like, okay, that's two guys in construction talking about what we should do yeah. versus <laughs> thousands of people not in construction, what we should do. Yeah, That's the difference between government and, and construction. And that's unfortunate because this has been perfected. I mean, like, you look at other cities, other countries, Europe, the, the, the energy, so much farther ahead. Yeah, the energy rates that are there, they're doing it because they can't afford to pay all this energy cost. For sure. No, there's you, you go to <coughs> Europe, even the Middle East, there's more solar panels than you see anywhere here. And even, like, everyone knows, like, the best hardware comes out of, like, Eastern Europe. It's, like, the best windows, like... It's a canoe ride across <laughs> the pond, and we get all this stuff right on our doorstep. Yeah. But we're not allowing to do this, yeah. which is really unfortunate. I mean, I'm seeing certain builders out west in BC. They're embracing it. They're doing it. They're taking the upfront costs. But there's something funny about it where it's, like, it's a catch-22 or even, like, this, this build that we have a green roof on. It's a passive house. It's an awesome house. But the windows are triple glazed. They're gorgeous. They come from Veto windows. They come from Poland. I know Veto, yeah. They come from Poland. Yeah. As much as I love the windows, Expensive. I have a hard time. Yeah, I have a hard time seeing the sustainability of like bringing it over from Poland to Canada to install in a Canadian. Like, I agree. You got to have something within Canada or at least North America that could offer the same quality product. Do you know that Thermary is going to be setting up a shop here? Are they? That's exciting. It's not going to happen for a few more years because yeah. it's quite a big deal. Yeah, no kidding. But um, a lot of it has to do with the sustainability aspect of it because, I mean, you get material that's either harvested from Europe and then it's sent to Estonia and then it's yeah. processed there and then it's shipped around the world. Basically, yeah. And and North America is becoming a big market for it now. So they're competing really well with ePay, which is good. Yeah, I think it's, it's great. good that we should get rid of ePay yeah, because it's a great alternative. there's like, only so many trees left in the Brazil. The you know, at every deck that we've had a spec for ePay on in the last like year two years we suggest ash and then give like 
a 10 second rundown of why it's better and they're like let's done. do it yeah done and when you oil it it looks the same so i don't understand well i guess and the cost is very similar but i guess yeah. people want the exotic exotic i don't think up. they know about it thermally oh really modified, yeah? thermally modified ash sounds pretty cool too it was a hard sell 10 years ago yeah a lot of people didn't they weren't convinced on it right mm -hmm. i saw but it for EP also time. in the summertime it'll burn your feet in august you don't want a little kid running on that no never mind the no. environmental impacts of like taking a tree that takes forever to to grow back but you're you're right like you can get these really well-made units that are made in other countries and you can set up a shop here and make it here and service north america mm -hmm. like the window manufacturer yeah i'm a huge fan of tri triple gaze and properly built units for that purpose but the for thing sure. is yeah i mean does it make sense to ship it all the way from there to here like to have it on doing? a shipping container on a boat it's like i'm scratching my head i'm like is that sustainable <laughs> but then you get the market <laughs> but it's machine. an amazing window it's, the it's an amazing window, window the packet, but, the packet but you'll get fantastic. manufacturers here in, in america or canada trying to knock off and it's not the same yeah right because they have to cost compete for that's sure. the problem right for sure and then the homeowner doesn't know any better i guess you got to deal with educated homeowners at that point yeah they have to understand what they're getting right and they can appreciate that but i guess when it looks at windows they go well we're going to replace them in 20 years anyway mm -hmm. you it's also have like to like that'll be one of the examples when someone's like how much does this two-page plan cost and i'm like well let me ask you a question about windows do you want aluminum fiberglass solid solid uh aluminum wrapped triple glaze double glaze what do you, do you want? want vinyl yeah like and they're like i don't know I'm like well every one of those things is like complete worlds apart not just for cost but for like style and operation like they're just different kinds of windows so if you can't answer that question then it's impossible to tell you how much your house is going to cost why isn't the government embracing thicker wall assemblies properly built wall assemblies where you have separation of insulation and mechanical runs like this all contributes yeah. to a better tight for home. sure they should it might be because how expensive every inch is in toronto and <laughs> the gta well, that's, yeah i don't I'm, know I, I'm going someone's back like well do i want eight inch walls or six inch exactly. walls <laughs> is my room going to be 12 feet wide or is it going to be right. 11 6 i yeah. want a 12 foot wide room uh but you're right no it should it all should be or at least it should be encouraged in a way where there's some material benefit to doing it not yeah. just like the client wants to do it out of their own out of their own goodwill or whatever reason well, it's just it's funny that the construction industry knows exactly how each detail should be built and what's really beneficial to creating a structure a certain way and their thought process is sign up for this heat pump save the planet <laughs> yeah it doesn't work like that yeah you know what i'm saying it really does not work like that but I mean, they have their own mandate. They have their own. Like the, heat, the heat pumps help. It helps. Until you get a minus uh, 10. 30, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then it can't sustain itself. Mm -hmm. And then what happens at that point? Then you need a backup. What's the backup? You gotta have something. A forced air. <laughs> or or you're gonna have a, you can't have a backup electric fireplace. No. Well, we've seen like heated floors and such. They're also, they've come out with new units that are able to. Uh, to resist like higher lower negative it temperatures but you still have to like wonder on those like brutal cold days like, you're gonna get it, them is it gonna hold up it won't you get <laughs> and I, if it doesn't it's a huge problem obviously. i've spoken to it but the thing see now here i go back to the wall assembly mm -hmm. if you're building the wall assembly if you're building the wall assembly proper then you don't and you won't need all that excess heat for sure like in this passive build that we did you don't really need to have much going to heat or cool it how thick were the walls 12 inches <laughs> 12 inches yeah 24 on center or were they 16 on center 16, studs? 16, 16 still yeah how much were you on the outside r uh on the outside was two layers of r you going rock uh rock wool yeah yeah rock wool Listen, Europe's been doing it that way for the mm -hmm. longest time, and I don't know why it took so long to do it here. Yeah, I see the seagull on your shirt. Like, that stuff's I love Seager. incredible. I love Seagull, right? The whole house is wrapped in it. Me, personally, one. I'm a bigger fan of Seagull than I am of Zip. 
Right. That's just me personally, right? Yeah. But it's just like it's either Coke or Pepsi kind of thing. Yeah. They're both good products. The real true essence of any good product is how it's installed. Exactly. I exactly. can get a monkey to install it, and it's, you're defeating the whole purpose of the product. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Right? And there's plenty of monkeys out there that are installing the wrong no, pro- or right products the wrong way. Yeah. Protect your investment one drop at a time. Your home or project deserves the very best when it comes to waterproofing. Trust nothing less than the service that guarantees you peace of mind and lasting protection. Meet Antonio, the expert behind Aquastop Waterproofing. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to keep your basement dry or a contractor in search of a reliable partner, Antonio and his skilled team deliver unparalleled quality and service. From the first site assessment to the final backfill, every detail is handled with precision, ensuring your project is completed on time, on budget, and to the highest standard. Antonio's team doesn't just solve problems, they prevent them. With a proven track record of working with insurance companies, educating clients, and using the best products available, Aquastop Waterproofing offers a solution you can depend on for years to come. Experience the difference with a team committed to excellence. Antonio and Aquastop Waterproofing are your go-to professionals for all things waterproofing. Get in touch with Aquastop Waterproofing today at 647-631-4144 or visit them at www.aquastopwaterproofing.ca. For direct inquiries, email Antonio at antonio at aquastopwaterproofing.ca. Let's make sure your property stays safe and sound, rain or shine. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. Now you got to know how to, how to install it. So that's what I'm just saying is that there's a lot of opportunity and, and it's not so much, I guess, for the, the lack of a stereotype when it comes to construction, homeowners for the most part just want somebody that they can trust that knows how to swing a hammer. But I think a good chunk of the industry is beyond swinging the hammer. You're doing homework on top of homework on top of homework. I think that a good contractor is on Google and checking out what Europe is up to, what Asia is up to, what Australia is up to. For sure. And they're bringing it into our own backyard here in Canada. It's how I sleuthed out Thermoroy for that project downtown. And the architect's like, this is a cool project, cool product. You would never but if that you was just because of the guidelines the client gave me and everything that kept it just everything just kept getting shut down in terms of like the the checklist of what the material had to be yeah. sustainable yeah aesthetically pleasing blah 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 um but yeah it's it, it you, you gotta if you got skin in the game you gotta give it you know you gotta take some initiative I just, I want less government and construction. That's it, man. Um, <laughs> what am I? Oh, yeah. You know what? You did the one project with all the cedar shakes. That's right. That's the passive one. That's the passive one, yeah. huh? That has a green roof and solar roof. It's nice. It's really cool. Not a lot of people choose the cedar shakes because we no. know, what do we got, 25 years? Yeah. Before you have to change? No, you have to change them, though, on a vertical application? No, it's... I don't think so. You, like, the warranty on them is 30 years. Yeah. But but that's on a traditional pitch roof. Yeah. If you go vertical. vertical on it, I think you're lasting longer. It's also pretty... Like, it's pretty buffered by... Protection. Yeah. It's, like, so dense in that area of Toronto. It's a huge building right next to it. And there's, like, a church next to the other one. Um... But it's still, it's, it's different. It's definitely different. It turned out great. Yeah. It turned out really well. And I know that, okay, for anybody who's not familiar with Toronto, Kensington Market is basically hugely, densely tight-knit yep. community in Toronto with a lot of interesting buildings that have been modified over the years poorly. Yeah. It's and like then now they're hunch. trying to build them properly, one at a time. Yeah. But it's a nightmare logistic for construction to bring in material, bring in oh, trucks. for sure bring in tools, bring in whatever you need to bring in. Or even like service upgrades or anything like that. It's Hydro or whatever, sure. everybody like that, yeah. It's also hard to keep a site like that uh, secure. It's like such I a was going to say there's uh, lots of theft. Yeah. Right? That's the, So how did you guys, I'm assuming lots of parking infractions. Yeah, fair enough. Comes with the game, right? It just yeah. they're, they're there, that's their job, we get it. Mm-hmm. That's another thing I wish the city would change. That we're very lucky to have a site about a block away from there that was in like the permitting process. So like we'd already been hired for the job. It was an empty house, uh, and just waiting for the permits to come through that had two car parking in the back. So we were milking that for all it was worth. How far of a walk was it, like the short walk? Yeah, it was like it was a block away. Really, it was. It was but still lucky. 
And still, even at that, it's still annoying when you have to like go get your tools and stuff. That's more for my guys, but nonetheless, it's a lot of parking tickets, a lot of parking tickets. I'd love for somebody to design some sort of drone that could hook onto a pickup truck and then bring it up and park it on the roof. Mm -hmm. Once you frame it on, you park it on the yeah. roof and that's it. But be that'll never happen. Now you got to be a pilot. You got to be a contractor <laughs> and a pilot. You can even fly drones downtown <laughs> Toronto. How are you going to fly? No, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's like you're going to get a huge fine now because you're flying a drone in Toronto. Well, that's a drone pickup truck, right? Yeah. But um, well, yeah, let me shout out the guy who did the Cedar because he's one of my oldest friends. Sure, I for sure. Grew up with him. I don't know, playing hockey when we were he like must have nine, been, He must have been in a playground. Like he must have loved it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But that's MZL roofing. Jake from MZL, he's a great guy. Yeah, he did a he did an amazing job, right? Yeah, like those woven corners. He did steps. the tree, yeah, which is the way it should have been done. Yeah, it looks beautiful. It's always a challenge with the windows around there, but it looks beautiful for sure. And yeah, I mean that was all my project manager Campbell, who just like basically lined it up so that it like is full shingles on every window exposure, uh, which took a fair bit of head scratching. That's a Mason's technique right mm -hmm. how you um and i'm sure they i don't know it'd be interesting to find out but i w i was fascinated when i learned from a mason how you can make the the courses dance you can shift them every so often yeah. so then they'll line up perfectly where they need to per line up on the windows or the doors yeah, yeah, or the yeah. headers so you don't have to have slivers right yeah same thing with cedar shakes yeah you have to do that and figure it out it's just the increments are a little larger yeah and that's I mean, still that different even in a microcosmic version and like tiling someone's bathroom yeah you have 100 you got to plan it before you just start yeah. put them up most people think you just do it on find knowledge on youtube video yeah. and then, and yeah, then you, you look and you're like oh should have done it <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, uh. <laughs> did you guys oil that the, the cedar uh the cedar is untreated no. it's untreated so yeah. yeah so it's gonna it's so gonna it's weather gonna, really nicely yeah then. it's already started to a little bit a little gray a little silver so are you go, like basically how are the architects in Toronto area? Like, are they in the Toronto area and they're, they're hiring contractors in the Toronto area? I mean, we have a combination of like clients who reach out to us and then we work with whoever the architects is on the project and then architects who will say like bid, bid on this project uh, alongside other builders just based on our relationship with them. Um, I mean, it's like anything. It's like a relationship. It's so much of it is about like disposition. Uh, same with the client yeah. where you got to like get along with each other. You got to be able to like want to have a f conversation with the person. Like I tell a client when I meet them, like if you don't want to, you got to like whoever you build, whoever that is. Because if you like, you're going to be getting phone calls. You got to be able to like still want to talk to me in a year. And it's important that like you have the same sort of, you don't have to be the same styles, but at least like a way that you can communicate together. Get to work together. And there are plenty of people who just don't, they just don't vibe, you know? And it's important to recognize that as early as possible too, because that'll save you from, from nightmare clients. But it's the same thing with architects where, I mean, for me, I want just the most diligent, thorough package possible. Um, but I also don't know behind the scenes if the, you know, if the architect's been hired for, uh, you know, for construction management, to, not necessarily management, but to be like making their their money off the cost of construction. Like sometimes it's a percentage of the cost of construction. Sometimes it's a fixed fee. You I'm don't not really a fan of the percentage when it comes to architects. No, that's no, kind of like a real estate mindset, right? For sure, and it's also it's, they're motivated to increase the budget. Yeah, and there's so much about it that, or even when there's change orders, they're like, great. I mean, they they shouldn't be, and I'm sure most aren't, but. People can't help when that. When I that know, but it's not fair to the end user, the client, right? To the client, for sure not. Where this for number sure just not. keeps on increasing over and over. And I, from my perspective, my job is to deliver the project, the project like to the best of my ability and for as reasonable a price as possible. Like you're not trying to get rich off a single project. You're trying to make money, obviously. Like there's a business to grow, um, but you you're supposed to be looking out for their best interests. If you're not, then it's like, who the hell is? Yeah. Um, but it, it can also get tricky where you have like a scenario where the client says, whatever the architect, wherever the designer says goes. And you're like, okay. Which is fine. Yeah. But then when like, first of all, they see it and they're like, that's not what I thought it would be. And I'm like, you approve the drawing. But that's the designer's yeah. responsibility now. Or when it comes down to like the cost of it being like, oh, well that, I didn't know that that was going to cost this amount. I'm like, that's what they told us to do. And we sent all the numbers to the, 
designer, if they don't share it to you, like what, it, who are we reporting to here? <laughs> you know? Uh, so I, I think, you know, that those are things that I've learned over the years of working that it's, it's just so important to set up that, that team of like the architect designer or architect or designer and or designer, the builder, the homeowner, they got to all work all cohesively work together. together. Yeah. They got to all have integrity. Yeah. The clients too. And, uh, and it's just got to be like a united front to really put the project together. And sometimes it's not. I just feel the stigma is there where I think a majority of contractors are more than willing to work with designers, architects, and clients and listen and communicate and work on things, how to solve it. Yeah. But then you don't get the same reciprocated on the other end. For There's sure. always that lack of wanting to have in-person site visits. Mm -hmm. And then I've always mocked designers that showed up on site without proper ppe yeah because i can get in trouble as a result of that For and sure. i've been on if ministry site. sees that it's yeah. a big problem i've had i've had plenty of that where it's like the family's allowed to do that mm -hmm. i've seen families come in with their kids and their kids are racing around and i had to pull the parent aside going listen you need to speak to your child they can't do that if something happens yeah, it it's all like falls holes on in the plywood for, yeah for we reference. know where everything is <laughs> yeah they don't know no for sure so it's for a little sure, dangerous so. at that point. And I think when it comes to the designers and the architects, be a little more respectful. We have to do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, we may not always be wearing our lid all the time, but we're definitely wearing safety boots. Yeah. And we have our goggles on when we're performing tasks. So at least have your safety boots. At least. No, you can't, like, you can't, like, minimize the importance of safety. You just, you can't. Because what happens if something does happen? it's your ass it's exactly right yeah. and then it's your brand name and then it's your your business that you're trying to build a reputation in that neighborhood to get For another sure. project and the last thing you want is oh that's the job that so and so fell or whatever right yeah. we don't want that i've seen designers show up in high heels never I can't, mind i'll, never I'll mind mock shoes. it i will make so <laughs> many <laughs> jokes i know i just i don't care i'll pick at yeah. it until they well they're in my car i go well how far is your car because i noticed that you parked right in front of the site mm -hmm. so why don't you go to your car and put them on then well, they don't go out with this outfit. <laughs> yeah. Like you get into this and then that's where the pissing match comes in, right? For sure. Where I don't think it's fair. You're already being disrespectful to the process of construction. Yeah. No, there's, uh, there's a lack of reciprocation of like gratitude to the builder. Um, I always try to reinforce it to my subs and my guys, but it's pretty rare you hear like, thank you. Really appreciated that. It, it does happen. We, we get it, but. I'm curious you being Hungarian. <laughs> you're Makita. That, that our gears Makita? Yeah. Are you, no, you. Are you Makita? Am I? I let the guys decide, to be honest no, with you. No, but we what are, are you? We, What's we, at home? Makita, yeah. <laughs> but we have a, we, we have a hodgepodge of tools. No, it's no, mostly, I know, no it, doubt, but there's I certain... would say it is mostly Makita now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Eastern European kind of mindset. That's They're right. mostly Makita, right? That's right. And no, then they bring it over here. DeWalt. We got some other No, stuff you bring it here, and then all of a sudden you get the DeWalt train picking at you and mm -hmm. i'm like listen i get it Dewalt's north american i understand like the, it like yeah the drill in my truck is a makita <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> right it's, it's a good i'm usually pretty good i'm usually pretty good right it's <laughs> impressive actually <laughs> <laughs> but that there's nothing wrong like every, uh, listen i go back to whoever's hands i mean you can give a really crappy tool to a person who's skilled mm -hmm. and they will do magic it doesn't matter that if they're you know have an amazing tool it's yeah. really the skill right absolutely so it doesn't absolutely. matter what cultural background or whatever you can but there's there's a lot of lineage you know the family tree kind of I think everybody's well not everybody but it's like you don't show up on a job site with like ryobi you know like yeah that won't you do work. if you're that, on tv that won't work out for you <laughs> <laughs> no it's just like everybody's on that train and they're trying to figure out but what's going on and and i'm like listen you can have the battles back and forth certain trades use certain brands and if you are really connected to your your cultural, you're using a certain kind of mm -hmm. brand. It's just been handed down from your dad. Like it's just how it is. My dad handed me down green Bosch tools. Right. I'm a Bosch guy. That's yeah. just how it worked. It yeah. Just and that's it. I, I started using Bosch tools, so I started building with Bosch tools. So then I'm a Bosch guy. Even though Bosch is like last, you know what I mean? In the, in the scope of things in North mm -hmm. America, here always picking on Bosch, and you either have to Bosch be Dewalt, bad. Makita. <laughs> Milwaukee, yeah, you know those are the ones that you have to be. But then uh, you know, like, I guess Festool's making a big yeah. Festool makes awesome. But Festool's shit. like Just so expensive, but, so expensive. But yeah. we have tons of Festool stuff for when we're working indoors for like finish work and it's, such. It's the cleanliness of a Festool. Like their yeah. vacuums are are they're, bar none the yeah. best. The way to keep things clean, 
is amazing. Yeah. Way they do everything. So it, it makes a lot of sense. But stupid expensive. Mm -hmm. Where do you see construction five years from now? Booming. Still booming, huh? I think so. I you, think did you get a slowdown? I, you're, we're definitely, like, we're, there's something hovering. Like, there's yeah. there's a dark cloud hovering. Yeah. Uh, we're lucky that we, we book our projects in advance, so we're, you know, we're buffered to an extent, but it's not a typical August would be, like, just, like, insanely busy uh, to the point where it's, like, just nonstop and, like, there's stress that comes with it or whatever, and we're just good busy. We're, like, I'm actually, I, was, I had a meeting with my project manager last week to talk, like, like numbers to date and whatever. And I'm like, look, August wasn't what it was last year, but I'm like, do you remember how stressed out we were last year? And he's like, that was insane. And I'm like, I'm spending time with my kids. I'm spending time with my wife. Not a bad thing. My brother came in from out of town. I spent time with him and my niece. not a bad thing. I'm like, I'm okay with it. I'm yeah. okay making a little less this month and like enjoying and not like going crazy. Did you have to let anybody go? Downsized? No. no. No, That's we're a good still, sign. We're just, we're humming along with, with really good projects, really meaningful projects that, you know, make money, but they're not like, I used to, it used to be that you'd, uh, at a stage in this time, I'd be just quoting like crazy, like crazy. And for all things that need to start like immediately and like, you know, just tons of flow going in and out. And it's just not like that now. It's just a lot slower. I mean, I think for the first time I can remember maybe the exception of COVID, but that's like its own sort of. That's a non yeah. like we don't know. Uh, where I've had like quality trades reach out to me being like, what, what do you have coming up? Like, can you keep me in mind? Like all that stuff that just shows you that like it's the funnel starting to, to yep. be turned off. Uh, I think fall, winter, who knows what's going to happen. Um, relationships, man. Whoever spent an effort to build relationships. Yeah. Just plant a seed that they can get some future work. Yeah. We'll actually be doing some future work. And I think you have to like kind of weather, like people don't see it, but I, I see it not to keep bringing up COVID, but it's kind of like just get through this period and it's going to come back around. The amount of immigration that comes here, the amount of like housing that's needed. There's also a mentality in the GTA that like a little, maybe a little softened now, but a mentality that like you can't go wrong with real estate and putting money into your house and into your house. And, yeah. and it's, I mean, I, Oh, I remember when I was a kid, you just moved into a house and it was like, this is our house. And if you did a renovation, like you planned it for 10 years, you had like, there's a whole thing, but like people buy houses and then just like completely rip out a kitchen. That's fine to make it theirs, which is also perfectly fine. It's what keeps me in business. So I'm okay with it. But uh, it's just a, a mentality that like, oh, a new kitchen will always be a good return on investment or putting money in will always be. And I feel like that's starting if it hasn't already, that's starting to kick in that like maybe hold your horses there. And obviously all the interest rate stuff, all the mortgages that are going to be coming They're up. They're just for spending more time next reviewing year. things. I think 2025 will be scary for the mortgage renewals and stuff. But how much of that trickles down to construction? It's all it's all so intertwined. It's uh, it's all connected. Yeah. It's, it's interesting what next year is going to be all about. And it's a question of whether or not there's enough of a push that an election gets called before October. Yeah. And I think that the Canadians are just no different than the Americans. We're waiting for what the next leadership, so to speak, is going to bring to the table. Yeah. And so we have a lot of change in the next couple of months between the U.S. Both sides. And, and Canada. Yeah. We're affected by the U.S. Like, unfortunately, the U.S. Sure. is not affected by us. Not, uh, not but we're definitely much. directly <laughs> affected by the U.S., yeah. right? When it comes to spray foam and blown in insulation for your next project, there's no better team than Mohammed and his crew at Fomit. With well educated, skilled installers, Fomit doesn't just get the job done, they do it right. They take the time to properly estimate and educate you on every aspect of your project, ensuring your building envelope is airtight and energy efficient. As leaders in the industry, they bring a deep understanding of building science to every job, making sure your project stands the test of time. But don't just take their word for it. Past clients constantly praise the quality of work and professionalism of the Fomit team. From homeowners to large-scale contractors, feedback has been overwhelmingly positive, with clients appreciating their attention to detail, the thoroughness of their crew, and the results that speak for themselves. At Fomit, they pride themselves on building lasting relationships through exceptional service, reliability, and the commitment to exceeding expectations on every single project.
Whether you're insulating a new build, upgrading an older property, or tackling a commercial project, Fomit is your trusted partner in achieving energy efficiency and comfort. They understand the importance of getting it right the first time, and that's why so many clients return to them for future projects. Connect with Fomit today. Reach them at 416-893-8712 or 647-961-9777. Email them at mohammed at fomit.ca or visit them at www.fomit.ca. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn to see their latest projects and innovations. This message is proudly supported by The Construction Life. No, I got my foot in both because I'm a dual citizen. So I'm like, there's a lot of volatility right now. Oh, so you get the vote. Yeah. Mm, interesting. But uh, it's, it's, it's just a lot. Of, like if you think about all the things up in the air, there's, a, there's quite a few. <laughs> it's an interesting movie that I'm waiting for the end credits. You <laughs> know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Like I'm just looking at it going, this is an interesting program. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many episodes there are here. <laughs> yeah. But it just, I think that's what's the finale. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. like it's like series finale is mm-hmm. what we're looking at, and, and and I just think that. Um, but look, it's we need a little bit of change too. Oh, hundred mm-hmm. percent. But it's like it's it's hard to when construction starts to slow down. I think the majority of people need to get nervous mm-hmm. because there's Especially a reason, a city like ours, yes, where it's like on steroids, and then it starts slowing down. Like mm-hmm. I was just told this week drywall foremen are staying home now they're mm-hmm. being asked to stay at home on big high-rise projects right that's a big deal those are it, all those are not not good signs you know like right now everyone's talking about don't even look at pre-cons mm-hmm. whatever's pre-con that's been approved that's working that's being built for sure good there's no new pre-cons being approved and moving forward. And nothing's being built, even if they have the approvals because of how much it costs yeah and then with the custom side where you guys more fit in I'm sure clients are probably getting three, four, maybe five bids now because they're probably comparing be. more apples. Yeah, you be. know, they, they want to see. I think I just sell, I mean, outside of a very high quality pro- product, which, you know. You have many, fewer apples to other, be compared to. Yeah, but many other companies do that in the city as well. Yeah. Not an anomaly. Uh, but I think it's our process of like the communication and the organization. And so I, I sell it based on that. But, you know, you're, you're probably right that people are just being a little more wary of just pressing go based on the numbers and getting a few more bids getting you know they just want to do their homework and see if the bids are all in the same line they should right that's what they really want to do but what what the the one x factor that i'm seeing right now is that i think in construction today it's the most that we've ever had the youngest amount of tradespeople. yeah and this is the first economical hurdle that it's they're a, going through as a huge problem and i don't know how they're going to react mm-hmm. because you can't compare them to two generations before them because when they had an economical downturn they just hustled yeah. the younger generation the older generation right this generation is more inclined to leave yeah and that's what i'm really upset about and even i don't think there's the volume if there was back in the day like people there was people took pride in being a mason as you should uh but like people want to own companies they don't want to be an electrician it's like, what's wrong being an electrician it's a great job yeah but they even, rather if, even if you're just an employee it's like yeah um so there's i think there's a shortage of, of the next generation behind you know sort of mine or even two behind mine or whatever and there's gonna be more of a need for more housing and it's like it's a perfect storm it's just uh and i don't i don't think i'm gonna see an answer for that until after the elections kind of thing probably it's not gonna be addressed in a meaningful way no 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 because it's not uh it's not glamorous no right like i still i keep fighting this fight about i want to find out how many people are leaving construction i don't care Mm -hmm. about how many people are getting into construction Mm -hmm. i want to know who's leaving and why Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a lot more guys leave and become sales reps of pretty big companies. Right. I'm seeing it. And number one reason I'm seeing it is because of physical. Yeah. They're like, I can't physically do it anymore. There's a shelf life to I know that. all that physical element. I know, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's challenging. And that's why the younger generation may not want to get into this or get into this to the same length that the majority of us got into it. Yeah. Right? They, don't, they, want, a, they want the pot of gold a lot sooner. Yeah. For sure. A lot bigger and a lot sooner. Yeah. 
but that's not construction. And then I, I would say look towards the big builders or the guys that did really well, and they went through those recessions. They went through those downturns, and they survived and figure sure. out how they did that. Different times. Yeah. Challenging times. No, but for sure. You, you, there's... For sure, there's there's a lot of factors moving. We around. should be building a lot more than we're building right now. But yeah. I go back to the gatekeeping from the politicians, yep. and that whether it means that you guys should hire a bunch of contractors to come into the examining room <laughs> and going approved, 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 approved. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's that. Maybe we should be. I don't know. If I was putting a dream team together, I'd actually go to the construction sites and go. Okay, who's your best? Just make a program on like George Brown that just pumps out. Yeah, pumps out examiners. Teach them. Yeah. And get them into the offices now and start yeah. putting money into there so then you can start getting these examinations done. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Kind of makes sense, right? Like, yeah. I just, I don't know, that's how I would look at it. Then all of a sudden, this person... Someone's going to hear it and be like, oh, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, we never thought about that. <laughs> wow. And then also reduce the development fees, man. Yeah. I think I've oh, that's covered... that's huge. That's huge. Everything, what else is there? There's nothing... Uh, da, 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 da. I think we've covered everything. Oh, one thing I want to talk... I love what you're doing with the old school Victorian homes. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have a passion for like, I love restoring. those homes, man. Yeah. And we love uh, you know, rest- restoration. And you talk about sustainability. Yeah. Like that's to not rip something down, but like to recreate it or or restore its former glory and then, you know, modernize it however you need to with, you know, mechanicals but still keep and whatever. that yeah. beautiful looking Toronto classic for sure. Victorian. For sure. Whether it's a semi or it's a fully detached. Mm-hmm. Are you there was one I saw was the paint removed or was the brick all redone? So there was one where it was the a client semi. was yeah the the client was insistent on trying to like reclaim the brick that was there even though we're like it's never going to happen. So we said look we'll we'll bring our mason out he'll pressure wash the whole thing treat it just for you know just to show you yeah it didn't do much and what it showed us was just how damaged the bricks were. It was painted so, so many decades. Yeah, yeah, so you know, it took some it took some doing, but we basically sourced heritage bricks that are, we mixed in. I think about one in every four is an old brick that was still good enough to use, but the large majority of them had to be thrown out. They're just there was like an area that never got exposed, like in the side, that never got exposed to all the conditions of hundred plus years. So that was part of like for the story of it still has those bricks in it, just not as many. Uh, but they did a beautiful job on that. Where do they source the brick out from, Crete Maker? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're the ones that are. I, I love what they're doing. They're paying attention to what. They're also bringing in the beautiful brick coming from Europe as well, yeah. too. Yeah, like those right? slender bricks. Yeah, and and the only thing is, I mean, I grew up on bricks costing less than a dollar. Yeah, bricks are now like getting dangerously <laughs> close to like ten. It's also like the labor cost to it. Like we've we've had clients say we don't want to do brick because we hear the labor is so expensive. We don't want to do a traditional Ontario yeah. size brick because it's twice the cost on labor yeah. and the labor is already expensive at that point. Yeah. And we never want to do a large format brick because it would look like crap in Toronto. Yeah. I get it. I understand that. But brick home in Toronto looks beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's essentially what I said. I'm like, it's a two by 12 brick we're talking about here. Like, just pick a normal size brick in a beautiful color and whatever. But um, they're, still, they're still figuring out where they're landing with that one. See, I loved it with that Victorian one because they still had arches there. Yeah. They still had arch soldier course arches. For sure. It's gorgeous. Like, I, I love, love all the, that the stuff. The before and after of that one is wild. It's insane, right? And, like, the back of, like, that building has, that's a legal tripe. That was a single family home. It's a perfect example of what Toronto needs. It's a single family home. Uh, and it was converted to a legal triplex. It has, like, triple glazed windows, spray foam insulation, solar panels. Uh, which just offset electricity and such and like a modern addition on the back using recycled steel whatever again it was a client who wanted like it's a rental so you could obviously just charge the tenant the electricity you don't have to put solar panels but but it's different to them and it was a client we've worked with before um and it's i think it's just like the it just captures like that old and new and like what we fills that gap and it's just like this is what we need and that it's like pays homage to the city of Toronto of what the architecture looked like back then and what arguably was the nicest era of architecture in Toronto. Going back to the government, I think there should be a fund, especially in Toronto, that should be allocated towards restoring at least the facades of all these homes. I would love it. 
I would love it. Every single month, a project is done, yeah, and until you finally get every single home done, and now you have these beautiful streets that people can walk you along. Should be a politician. That are man. not. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I'll be assassinated. Um, no, like uh, uh, because you would walk around. Like we know the certain neighborhoods in the city that have those streets that people take care of, but mm-hmm. these are like five, six million dollar homes. Yeah. This is not realistic to common people, no. right? But it's like, and I also argue the point that he made it a legal triplex. I think he's going to attract a certain kind of tenant. For sure. He's not going to attract shadiness. No, they're all like A plus tenants. Yeah, like and they're going to want to take care of the place because guess what? They get to walk down that street and walk up that front step and yeah. enter that door. That's their dwelling. Yeah. That's a different well, I saw, design. I saw one of the tenants like last week, like watering the garden. That's like, it just shows they care. And that's that's, that's not their responsibility. Want. That's 100% what you yeah. want, right? So it's, it's like there's a way to do that. And that's what I think government funding should be spent on. Yeah. Little things like that should be taken care of. So you can start beautifying these streets, right? Over 630 shows. The construction life. This show is constantly evolving. The idea is that I'm, I'm listening to the guests and I'm listening to our audience. And I'm trying to figure out where else can we take the conversation. Listen, I understand. It's not always about swinging the hammer. I've told everybody since day one, TCL is 50% about swinging the hammer and TCL is 50% about the person swinging the hammer. So now we're taking it to the next level, level X. In TCL X, we invite guests to share their dark, hidden secrets of the industry without fear of reprimand. Each guest's identity will be protected with visual blurring and voice modification, allowing them to speak freely and openly you might want to tune in to TCLX. It'll be exclusive. You'll have to find it where the real hard stories are going to be told and nothing's off limits because at The Construction Life, the truth matters. Book now to be a guest on the show. You can DM me through any of the social platforms. You can email me at info at theconstructionlife.com or you can text me at 416-433-5737. TCLX is coming soon. Yeah, I agree. Nothing's worse than... I remember years ago, I don't know if you remember this, in when Queen West was still shady Queen West. Yeah. And right at the bottom there towards uh, King, um, I think it's the tail end of either of Crawford or Shaw. Yeah, I know what you're they, talking about. They try to build modern day brownstone. Yeah. They look terrible. <sighs> I'm sure it that was, whole pocket looks terrible. It, it, I'm sure it was drawn to look like brownstone, <laughs> but when I saw it, yeah. And I saw it. It's and like I was, the cheap brick that's trying to mimic it. It was like, like you guys chose the worst material ever. And now, years later, it looks horrible. Yeah. It just doesn't age and it looks like crap. It looks like, like subdivision-y. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you gave up all the essence of any kind of interesting element towards this structure. Yeah. And now you, it looks like crap. It should be just demolished, right? Mm-hmm. But that's that's that that's the mindset. Was that was a that was a city development or I think no no private. that was that was a right. developer. That's just someone who chose someone whatever. who chose yeah. to do this. And I was like, this is because they all have front steps that are probably yeah. 10, 10 steps or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a huge fan. You go well, to they Chicago. They have grand walk ups. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is great. It's great. So all of a sudden, you can have more light in the basement unit. I get yeah. it. It makes a lot of sense. But what you've chosen as a as a finished material, I can only address what the inside looks like. Which yeah. is probably going to be crap. Probably yeah. going to be three and a half inch colonial probably, trim. Yeah, which is crap. Well, it's probably it's probably an indication of whatever everything that's inside. Uh, who came up with the name? Uh, is it Bungawal? Bungawo? Bungawo? Yeah, because bungalow. Oh, Bungawo. I think I came up with that or, one. Oh, bungalow. Bung- bungalow to bungalow. <laughs> yeah, that was one. That was an ancient house that we redid. Yeah, I, I want to know who your drywaller is. Who do like you use? Waller. Yeah. We use... Or you uh, use a few. We use a few, but JW Custom Finish is uh, Jeff, who's fantastic. Uh, he's an old school guy. Does level five. I noticed That's that all he, the curve. Like, all that shit is, is his staff. I noticed that he chalk lined his screws. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Line them up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm, I guess it makes a, for a lot of... Like it just to mud it and get it all done perfectly. It looks yeah, seamless. Yeah, it just it just precision. It takes two seconds to chalk it for sure, and then you just screw it in and it's all done. Yeah, and because at first when I took a glimpse at it, I was like, "Why is he using like sixty inch slivers of drywall? I don't understand that. That makes no sense." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Those aren't slivers; those are chalk lines." Yeah. <laughs> so whoever's installing it is chalk lining and putting all the screw holes perfectly yeah. where they're supposed to be. Exactly. 
And I remember that seeing electricians do laser levels so they can drill all their holes. Yeah. And run all their cables, right? Yeah. And then you get the guys who don't care about construction saying, why are you wasting time? No, it's not wasting time. It's taking pride. No, for sure. Uh, that, like, the electrical, like, measurement diagram where shows them where everything is on a drywall ceiling. It's like, where are all the lights? Where's all the... That's taking pride. Fancy everything. And you're like, eh, it's getting cut out. Yeah. That's how it should yeah. be, man. No, and with all those, like, uh, you know... Flush vents and air returns and all that stuff. It's it takes time, time and effort. Really, there was an interesting question that I came across on social media about how should you have a site foreman or for woman on site every single day of the project? And some people are saying, well, who can afford that? And I think that you should have someone there that has to have answer your questions. I, I think, think there should, there should, should be someone be. who's always in charge. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. totally should be there, right? Like we have a site supervisor who's dedicated to every site, but they're not there all day, every day. They're hovering and like, yeah. like as I was talking to you before, how we but do they're mo they're clusters. moments away. They're, they're be, nearby. Yeah, there'd be like three, four sites within a yeah. six kilometer radius. Yeah, um, and even so, my guys will have the the wherewithal that if you know he steps out to check on another site and the client comes in to like you know be proactive to meet them and talk to them or whatever, but not. Like to tell them, they'll say, supervisor, we'll be back shortly. You can answer any of your questions. Like, don't start walking around the house with them and answering no. questions that you don't know text what the hell's him. going on. Or text yeah. you, and then, yeah, he'll Absolutely. be right there. Absolutely. Right? Or even something as simple as, like, the ministry. If you don't have someone on site, that's a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is that I think that you should have someone, or at least someone accessible that's going to be there within moments, right? Yeah. Whatever. Within 30 minutes, they're there. Yeah. Done. For sure. Right? For sure. So that's why it was just interesting, but... Um, oh no, one last question before I ask you the 12 questions. Sure. What Murphy kit are you guys using for the kit for the Murphy beds? Murphy bed, I have to look back at it to find you the name. I'm just curious because I've, I've done my share mm -hmm. and I have yet to find there was one Italian kit that was pretty good, it was a little pricier, but I, I have yet to find one that's like perfect, mm -hmm. just like perfect on every level, right. But I was just curious. I saw yours, and I was like, I was just yeah. curious on what the mechanical was on it. That was, uh, the mechanical seems to be fine. Granted, no one's, to my knowledge, slept in it yet. Okay. Because uh, it's still, that was a relatively new build. But that, the client sourced that and just had us, like, sort of install the whole thing. But Yeah, put it all together. Yeah. I mean, it's a good use of space. I'm a fan of them. Yeah. No. I mean, in dense Toronto, they make more and more sense every day. We got to go back to the good old days when I was a young kid and you had, you know, seven people living in a house that was no wider than 15 feet. Yeah. And that was roomy. Yeah. You, you know what I got mean? along really, real fine. It's a different story, right? Yeah. And so, uh, Zeke, thanks so much, man. I got to do the 12 questions. Triple sure. W Z Z contracting.com on IG under Z Z contracting and then info at Z Z contracting.com and his phone number to reach him is 416-820-3401. So who's the second Z on? Is now, it? And now it's just, I mean, it was an old nickname of mine too. Got like it. My brother used to call me ZZ and Seek were like my two nicknames. So I just sort of embraced it, it like rolled that. Into yeah. that. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite construction word or phrase? Uh, giver. Giver. Least favorite tool? A broken one. <laughs> what do you miss from your childhood? Fishing with my grandfather. Uh, what construction sound do you love? A nail gun. Pneumatic yeah. or battery? No, pneumatic. Battery's got no romance. Yeah. Pneumatic. I love hearing it. It's like, that's the sound of shit getting done to me. What's your favorite beverage? Uh, beer. Which beer? Creamer. Soda water, if I'm talking non-alcoholic. I drink a crazy amount of soda. Uh, this is a construction life. We never talk non-alcoholic. <laughs> what, you, what, you turn, what turns you on and off in construction? Uh, I mean, building people's homes is, is a pretty special thing. It's like the most, probably the most valuable asset to somebody outside of, you know, at all, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, the relationships that I build from all of these, like each job I say should lead to three more. You build homes, you build relationships. Uh, and that's how, like, we keep compounding, leapfrogging is just every time we finish a job, we get referred to multiple others. Uh, some of those connections have also come in like huge for me, like when my father-in-law had a heart attack and I happened to know the head of, you know, the heart ward, whatever, Sunnybrook, and I can just call him and get him put it like, so that stuff like is invaluable. It's like, it's yeah. priceless. Yeah. Um, having clients gift you like, I don't know, fancy hockey tickets that I would never afford otherwise. <laughs> like, um, so I'd say like really just 
that you're creating someone's home is pretty special. And then you get to meet these people that you probably never cross paths with no, in your wouldn't. life. Yeah. And you know, if you do it right, they become colleagues, become friends, they become your, like your peers. What turns you off? Some people are crazy. Some people are just crazy. You talking about in construction people or client people or uh, politicians? We all know they're crazy. It's everywhere. I mean, everywhere. You know, I think, you know, we have like a screening process in terms of like, you know, warning signs when we're meeting a new client and certain things like there's certain things that you could tell like this person is just not somebody yep. I'm going to get along with yeah. in a year from now. Uh, but every now and then one sneaks by you, uh, <laughs> or you get a little greedy, to be honest with you. And you're like, ah, oh, I'll just forget those warning signs. Cause it's a big project or whatever. I agree. So a per- like something like that can, uh, it can just, I don't know, take years off your life dealing with somebody crazy. Just become stressful. <laughs> yeah. Favorite curse word. Um, uh, fuck. Favorite vehicle, any mode of transportation. Uh, the two trucks I own. My, my Yukon Denali that I love. So GM, both of them GM? Yeah. yeah. And my 1968 vintage custom. That's right. You have, is it blue? Yeah. It's that like turquoise blue. Yeah. Is it a wood bed? Uh, it is not. No. It's not a wood bed, huh? No. It's nice. It's Did beautiful. you rebuild it? No, I bought it and rebuilt. It's a nice truck. Yeah. Got for about 17 Stick, grand. It's stick or is that auto? Oh, it's auto. It's auto, eh? Yeah. But it still has this. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, I love it. I love that truck. I'm not such a like crazy car person, but but that's a nice I'm, one. To I'm have. really happy with the two I have. That's a nice <laughs> one, to, and it's funny that I saw yours, and then I saw this guy's bike recently, and he had like that turquoise kind of bluish green right. tone on the tank, and and, and he was all dressed up, it? and it looked it looked amazing, oh, man. Right I was like, totally, that's a nice color, man. I think that means our social media shit's working. uh what profession other than your own would you like to attempt one day um i actually tried when my wife was pregnant with our twins i took my realtor course because i thought it would be interesting to be thought it'd be very lucrative to be an agent a builder contractor um and i did all the courses the the two first preliminary uh tests and then my wife went into labor prematurely with our twins with twins the day that was my test, never took it and never, never got around to doing it. Uh, they're, you they're, passed, they're five now. You passed it. You passed a different test. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, it, that's what you could say. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it also made me realize I do not have time for more stuff. Once I had like twins the next day, my, like, my whole life changed. That's what I hear. <laughs> what in, profe- a, in a good way, in a very good way. What profession would you not like to do? Um, I, when I was in college i was planning to be i did a first class honors degree in comparative religions in judaism and islam and i wanted to be a professor and i think if i had done that i probably killed myself because i i'm like i have such like like i'm always bouncing around i need the problem solving the non-stop action and construction like i i feed off of it yeah and I don't know why I was in this stage of my life, maybe because my dad was an academic. I don't know that I thought that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to like be a professor, go to graduate school, basically read books, write books that probably no one would ever really read. Um, and when I got my like my sort of like uh, quarter scholarship, whatever, I sort of had a heart to heart. I'm like, do I really want to go on this path? And I just chose to go back to Toronto because I had this job offer for property management. I could ch- see if my business would flourish and that was fuck that was 11 years ago 12 years ago and here we are yeah interesting so i'm not going to be a professor it turns out not yet <laughs> <I never know. laughs> last question if heaven exists what would you like to hear god say when you arrive at those pearly gates uh that i left it a better person than when i arrived thanks zeke really appreciate your time man yeah thank you for having conversation. me on. thank you so much i'd love to work and keep it up and you got a big crew is it a big crew, bunch of people or oh, we're eight eight guys that's a good size yeah yeah everyone yeah. gets along everyone yeah, hangs out and for sure we do company barbecues nice all nice, kinds of man. fun stuff when we went uh when, if you want to hear a really funny story yeah, we'll go, of course I'm, really, I'm gonna throw myself under the bus here oh, okay what happened uh two summers ago i thought it'd be really good fun to rent a boat and take all the guys out and we'll do a barbecue on the boat like by the island whatever okay. beautiful day we had a great time i mean barbecue on a boat like that's a little complicated but we, we figured it out my project manager took the lead 
And then uh, it was starting to get a little windy, whatever. I'm like, I'm going to go downstairs. This is like three hours in. We're all drinking, having a great time, like yep. having a wonderful day. And then I go downstairs to take a piss. And uh, the boat's like, the captain fires up the engine. And I take a pee. I, I flush it. I wash my hands. And then I turn around. It's like out of like one of these stupid horror movies. And I couldn't get out of the, like the door is locked. I'm like pounding on it, and all the guys I can hear them. So like, yeah, another one. <laughs> you know, they're having a great time. And then like the the, the captain like fucking goes into like fifth gear, starts going. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> and now you're bouncing and around, I'm like stuck in this little fucking room. <laughs> Eventually, somebody was like, "Where's Zeke?" And they open the door. I like spill out, like drenched in sweat. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm like dehydrated now. How long were, were you in there for? I felt like I thought I was gonna die in there. I, oh wow! <laughs> no, no, it was probably like 20 minutes or something. What but was that, it? A lap? That's or something that just got yeah it was something like just it would i was like going i was like kicking it and they have those little windows and i'm yeah. just like trying to get like fresh air I'm like, guys guys i'm here nobody can hear yeah i just hear them like just yelling and, and nobody thought where's he what's going on well, eventually guy? somebody opened the door up i was like thank god i gave him a big hug he's like oh you're so sweaty <laughs> So no more boat barbecues. I, yeah, we, I, we didn't do that this year. Oh, that's this year. funny, man. No, no, I like the culture, the company culture, and I think no, there's no, value it's a, there. And it's important. anybody who's paying attention. And the other thing that I do notice, too, the more and more people I speak to, I think good GCs are people that understand the fine art of being laid back. Yeah. Like, you can't let you everything be, be, you can't let it take it personal. For sure. It, and there's it, up and downs, right? Oh, for sure. And I mean, having lived through some adversity, like it's, you, you just can't let any of that shit get to you. And you have to, you need to stay calm to problem solve. Yeah. If you're like, oh, uh, if you're you scrambling, can't clearly you're understand anxious. what's, what's going on yeah. and what needs to be taken care of. And like nine times out of 10, if not more, there's a way to like cut through the noise and find the solution. You just got to get your head on straight. So the ones that figure it out, a lot of respect to them, right? Yeah. So to all the young people listening, try to figure it out because start now. You might get it in about 10 years. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it Slow takes a little bit of time. It yeah. takes a little bit of time. Zeke, thanks so much, man. We're right out of here.